under the Trading with the Enemy Act, and this included Prescott Bush, the grandfather of George W. Bush. Prescott Bush was a partner in Brown Brothers Harriman, the most prestigious investment bank on Wall Street, at a time when the influence of the WASP establishment in America, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, was near its peak. Not only did some of the most powerful corporations support fascism in Europe, so did many of its most powerful politicians. Mussolini was frequently praised by leading political figures in the United States and Britain, and even by Churchill himself. On January 20th, 1927, he lauded the new philosophy while on a trip to Italy. I will say a word on an international aspect of fascism, Churchill stated. Externally, your movement has rendered a service to the whole world. Italy has shown that there is a way of fighting the subversive forces which can rally the masses of the people, properly led, to value and wish to defend the honor and stability of civilized society. It was only when fascist states began threatening Anglo-American interests that the philosophy fell out of favor, at least temporarily. Working class men and boys from around the world were now forced to either defend or combat the Frankenstein monster nurtured by elites within their own nations. The nightmare of World War II had begun. General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. The flags of freedom fly all over Europe. Despite rhetoric to the contrary, Truman would support fascist and other totalitarian leaders across the globe. Republican Senator George Bender lamented that, Mr. Truman has urged the Congress to authorize a program of military collaboration with all the petty and not so petty dictators of South America. Progressive politician Henry Wallace went further. He stated that, bipartisan reactionary war policy would eventually lead to outright fascism in the United States itself. According to Wallace, the Cold War would lead to a century of fear. Mm -hmm. 